Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. I uh, apologize, haven't had a uh, video out in the last couple weeks. Had some family matters we had to take care of and uh, spend a little bit of time up in the home state of Ohio. So that's behind us now and we're able to get back to some projects. So first thing I wanna show you is something pretty cool. Check this out. The Spitfire engine and rear end is together on the chassis. Son and I did this uh, last weekend. And of course, uh, you've seen some of these projects on and off. There's the uh, solid steel mounts for the rack and pinion steering. Those look nice. These brackets were fabricated by my son out of uh, quarter inch steel plate and tubing. I think he had that stuff sourced from send cut send of course the uprights on the spitfire bolt-on assemblies and you adjust the position of those to play with your uh, caster and camber and then there's a tail mount there's a resilient mount we just have the bolt part way in there that holds up the rear end of the transmission <clears throat> and then we have the teeny tiny drive shaft both of these yokes actually not those yokes these yokes had to work on take the OD down so that the uh, tubing would fit and I think he did some clearance work on the frame here this uh, drive shaft has a vertical offset and a horizontal offset you can see it a little bit better here that's just to accommodate where the input pinion is on the differential and then the differential mount that's a fabrication that my son did I think I worked on the 3 8 thick steel pieces there <clears throat> and you can see the axle spacers left and right which bring the uh, axle shafts out to the right point and the spring mounts to the top of that <clears throat> There's a long bolt in here that goes through the differential cover. The differential cover has resilient mounts, and uh, I flattened this on the K&T, so a lot of these parts made their way through the shop. But that's a sweet little chassis there. Oh, and that's right, the chassis ended, ends here. This is an extension that my son put on, uh, making sure that it would clear the existing fuel tank so that he could put a hitch receiver. And there's, a lot of the European cars, they use a U-shaped hitch. So it plugs in from the underside and it's completely hidden. You don't see the receiver sticking out the back of the car. And it's just for towing his motorcycle trailer. So. That's coming along and you guessed it, this will propagate more projects because now that this is in place, I got to start working on the front end accessory drive. You got a lot of room between the front of the engine and where he's going to have the radiator. And so he's making spacers to bring the belt assembly forward of, you know, not the timing belt, but I believe the accessory drive belt is going to be forward of its original position. Most of you probably recall the Yale three-ton hoist in the trolley that I installed on this overhead beam. This allows me to offload items up to 6,000 pounds and I've got a almost a 25-foot travel left to right there so I could pull in with the vehicle and take something off of a trailer perhaps but uh, right now the body of the Spitfire is taking up most of my room. The Skinner steam engine, which is really at the limit of that, might be over the limit of uh, 6,000 pounds by the way it felt, but that's kind of at the extreme right-hand travel uh, of the beam. And at the extreme left-hand end of travel, you go in here into my weatherproof case for the k and I can just get 
like the rotary table onto uh, the mill table by pushing the hanging chains a little bit further than what they are supposed to go I can get this 300 pound uh, 18 inch trike rotary table up on the mill table. So one of the items I acquired while I was up in Ohio is just a mini version of that three ton hoist. It's a half ton hoist, so a thousand pounds. Almost identical construction. It's got that same, you know, buttery smooth action for positioning items with the hook. I need to coat the chains with the special um, graphite oil that contains uh, a graphite lubricant. You want that to basically kind of evaporate away and leave a graphite film on the chains. So I have to remake a batch of that because the batch that I had, uh, the spray bottle that it was in cracked in the cold weather. So working on the front end drive of the Spitfire, this is going to be the pulley that drives the fan clutch. And he's got that mounting on a hub that contains a bearing. And then there's going to be another standoff. I think the bearing is part of a standoff that uh, goes forward and holds the fan clutch um, and then clamps against something. So this ID has to be opened up to 1 and 11 sixteenths. It's going to break into really all of these holes. And then we have a new three hole pattern on two inch 200 thousandths that I have to fit in between here. Um, don't know exactly, it doesn't look like it matches his drawing, but I'll find, I'll find a place to fit three more holes in here. So got to figure out a way to put this in the lathe, either clamping from the ID, try to see if the grooves run true, doesn't wobble and then open up this bore. The exact dimension isn't as important as the fit on the mating part. So, you know, if I can hit this number on the nose and I'll make the mating part match. So let's mount this guy up and uh, see what we can do with it. Okay, this is the assembly that uh, we're gonna be working on for the front of his engine. The big part on the left is the clutch uh, assembly for the fan, which I believe bolts onto the front side of this. He didn't model everything. Actually, it might bolt on to those four holes right there. And I believe that has a spacer with four slots. So the initial part is the pulley, which he has loading onto a hub. And the hub I also have a model of. And this is all held in a bearing. So let's section this. He has the hub with a counter bore. The bearing loads in the counter bore retained by a snap ring. And then this is held by a cap screw onto a standoff. So this, this is a, it's like an idler assembly. I talked to him about using a double row bearing here to be able to take some off center thrust. And he said it'll be fine with a, a single row bearing because there were, uh, you know, existing idlers that had single row bearings on this serpentine belt. I did convince him to put a snap ring on here, but uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments or I'll let you comment on his site because I would have much preferred to put a double row bearing in here. He has enough space to do it. But for now, we're just gonna make it exactly like he said. So first we will work on the pulley, getting the bore and the mounting holes for that. And then I've got a chunk to uh, hog out and make the standoff piece to hold the bearing. It's gonna to have to have a, a bearing fit in here, which is gonna be interesting to do on the Acriturn lathe, but we'll see how it goes. Let's get the uh, pulley set up first. Okay, I've chucked on the inside of this outer rim and it runs about uh, within five thousandths TIR, registering in the bottom of the grooves. When I sweep the bore, I mean, there's paint on this registering bore and there was like some definite little humps. So it was acting squirrely there. And we're starting with a bore of 1.17. We've got to go to 1.6875. So about a half inch has to come out of this. I 
I need a clearance. And since it's such a short amount of material that we have to remove, I think I'll just run this in and out manually. Ah, let's just go ahead and use the feed. We're going to definitely break out into those holes here at some point. So we're taking an actual 20,000 steps of cut each time. I think I'll run the speed up higher. Let's check progress, and you know what I'll do? I'm going to slow the feed down. All right, an inch and a half, almost exactly. That was an eight thousandths feed. I'm going to go down to a five. My little post, my little stop screw is uh, interfering with uh, my measurement. Let me try the other calipers. I'm at one inch six twenty eight. One inch six forty, getting very close. I think the proper way to measure this more accurately would be with my sliding parallels that um, you know measure hole sizes. They only go up to an inch, but if you slip a gauge block in between them to spread them apart, 
you can measure bigger holes than that. So, and that's in the other building. So I'm pretty close to where I need to be. I'm gonna stop here and pick up next time, getting those, take a, take a, a measurement with the gauge block in between. And then uh, I can measure that over the outside edges of those with the calipers. Cause with this step in, I just can't, I can't reach in there and get a square measurement, but um, pick up on this next time. And uh, we'll just keep on cranking out these accessory drive components for the Spitfire. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't a whole lot of content, but uh, hey, you gotta start slow getting back in the groove, right? So this box, got my, this box on our pallet jack is basically full of oak flooring scraps. These were taken up from a house uh, locally here and they were free. And my son has an idea to make parquet flooring like uh, a really neat pattern where all he would need would be pieces even smaller than this. So he spent a day and filled the bed of the pickup truck with these, except now he's got to take nails out. So he's got uh, the start of a, a pile here. He's got a start of a pile of uh, flooring nails that he's pulling. And every single one of these is gonna to have to be cut to an exact width and length. And, and not all are just square cut. I think he's got a pattern that's like a star pattern to it. So it's gonna be real interesting to see that and see him work his way through this pile. So uh, we'll continue uh, pecking away at the Spitfire projects for the time being. Um, I feel like a job shop to him, but hey, it's work. It builds my skills on the lathe and uh, probably have to get back on the mill too for, for some of these. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Try to have another video out for you next weekend. And until then, like always, stay safe.